So graphs in a data structure is also similar to a trace, but here we can have a closed loop, right? So whereas in a tree, we can't uh, go with a closed loop, but here graph can have a closed loop. And here the graph is defined as a set of V comma E phase, where V is a set of vertices E is a set of edges. So a graph can be defined as a set of vertices and a set of edges. So every graph will be having a vertices and a edges. So vertices can be represented as circles and these are also known as nodes. Edge is represented as sorry. lines and also oh, sorry. So lines which are connected, connecting two vertices or nodes, two vertices or nodes. So a graph can be defined as a vertices and edges. So vertices are represented as circles and the edge is represented in the lines. So let us take an example for this graph. This is a simple graph. This can be called as a graph. So a, here A, sorry, B and C are vertices or nodes. And the connectivity between the vertices a b and a c are so a b a comma b a comma c these are called edges so edges means the connecting two nodes right so this can be considered as a graph and if you have a line between this b and c so b c is also forms a page that means it is also an edge so this is also a graph but not a tree. So in the absence of this one, in the absence of this edge, this can be either a graph or a tree, right? So if you have an edge between B and C, it is a closed loop, it's a closed surface, right? It forms a cycle. So if, if it forms a cycle, it cannot be called as a tree, it is a graph. That's the only difference between the tree and a graph. Right, so here the nodes and edges. So let us see first, let us see the terminology of a graph and then we'll go with the types of a graphs, different kinds of graphs. Graph terminology. The first one is node. First one is a node, which is nothing but a vertices represented as a circle and then edge, which is a line, which is a connection between a two different nodes, right? And the third one is edges and nodes, edges and nodes. So if you consider any edge, that means there will be so let us take an example A, B and similarly A, C, similarly B, C. So there are three edges, right? Three edges. So for this edge, the node A and B are the starting and ending points. For this edge, the node B is a starting point, C is the ending point. For this edge, A and C are the end points for this 
particular edge. So that's why the adjacent nodes means which connects an edge, those nodes we call it as adjacent nodes. In this example, A and B are adjacent nodes. Similarly, A and C are adjacent nodes. Similarly, B and C are adjacent nodes. So this is how we can have the edge. So degree of a load. So how to calculate the degree of a load? So it represents the number of edges corresponding to that particular node can be considered as a degree of load. Number of edges connected to that node. For example, let us take this one A, B and C. Right? Now, degree of A degree of A. What is the degree of A? So A is having two nodes. So degree of A is 2. So degree of B. B is also having two nodes. So degree of B is 2. Similarly degree of C. C is also having two nodes. Two. So in the absence of this one, so degree of A is 2. Degree of B is 1. Degree of C is 1. Because B is having only one node towards A. C is also having one node towards A. So that's why we call this degree as the number of edges connected to that node. Size of a graph. Size of a graph. So size of a graph represents the total number of edges. The total number of edges in graph can be considered as the size of a graph. So let us take this example. So there are three edges for in this graph. So size of this graph is 3. So size is 3. What about this example? Only two edges are there. So the size for this graph is 2. So the total number of edges in the graph represents the size of a graph. Path. Path means the sequence of vertices so from starting node to ending node. So sequence of vertices. From source node to destination node. source node to the destination node right so let us take an example here so if you take this one a b c d so if you want the path from a to c right a to c so this is the source this is the destination the path will be a to B to C or A to D to C. So whatever the edges or the sequence of vertices from source node to destination node. So here the source is A and the destination is C. So we can have that the path can be A to B, B to C or A to D, D to C. Right? So this is called a path. Okay. Then. So these are the basic terminologies we need to know before starting the graphs concept. So hope you understood the definition of the graph. So graph is a set of uh, vertices and edges. Right? Now we will go with the different kinds of uh, graphs. Different uh, types of graphs. types of graphs so first one the first one
directed graph and undirected graph directed and undirected see coming to this undirected so there will be no directions specified on the edges so let us take an example so a b c d and a let us take one more thing so this one right so this is also a graph it contains vertices and edges right so in this example there is no directions specified on the edges so we can travel from a to b or b to a so here a comma b is equal to b comma a right similarly b comma c is equal to c comma a so there is that means there is no direction specified in this graph so we can consider that a and b a to b is one traversal and b to a is another traversal so in both the directions we can travel right in the both the directions in that we can travel so coming to the directed graph as the name indicates so every edge will be having a specific direction that means so this we can call as a bidirectional right this we can call as a unidirectional so only in only one direction we can travel through the edges right see let us take an example here a b c d So this is called a directed graph because so here every edge is specified some direction so only one direction we can travel so there is a node between a and b so a and b is not equal to b comma a because here we have specified the direction from a to b not from b to a so here b to c so direction is only from b to c so b is a starting point and c is the ending point but not the vice versa right so this is the only difference between the directed graph and undirected graph right so hope you understood it's a bidirectional it's a unidirectional it's a bidirectional it's a unidirectional so only one way we can travel so this is the difference between directed graph and undirected graph now we'll go with the another another kind right weighted graph and unweighted graph weighted and unweighted so here we have to specify some weight or a cost for the edge see let it be either it may be a directed graph or under undirected graph so there there is there is no any cost specified for that edge so here we can specify some cost for every edge so in order to travel from a to b the cost is Two. That means here we are specifying some weightage for every edge. So if you specify some weightage for every edge, that is called a weighted graph. So here weight is specified for every edge. No weight is specified. So 
either it may be a directed or in undirected whatever it may be so in the directed also we can have the weighted and in the undirected also we can have the unweighted right so whatever it may be if if the edge is having any weight or a cost then the graph is called as a weighted graph and if the graph doesn't have any cost or weight specified for the edge that is called unweighted graph so this is a difference between weighted graph and unweighted graph right now we we'll go with the third one we will go with the third one cyclic graph and acyclic graph cyclic and acyclic so cyclic means it, it should perform the loops loop means so if you find the path from source to destination the starting point and the ending point should be the same vertices I will show you example So if you consider this one, find the path here. So here you can form, so A to B, B to C, C to D, and again D to A. So the starting vertex and the end vertex both are same. So that means it forms a cycle. It forms a cycle, right? So hope you understood this one. So if the starting vertex and the ending vertex are same, then that is that forms a cycle and if our graph consists of the cycles then it is called a cyclic graph if our graph doesn't have a cycle then that is called a cyclic graph see so here it doesn't form any cycle it doesn't form any cycle so this is called a cyclic graph so similarly we can say this one so if any graph doesn't have the loops doesn't have the loop that we can call as a acyclic so in the acyclic also this graph can be either directed or undirected it can be weighted or unweighted so whatever it may be if our graph consists of the cycles then we call it as a cyclic if it doesn't have any cycles it is called as a cyclic graph right so hope you understood this one so weighted unweighted directed undirected cyclic and acyclic so these are the different kinds of graphs available in our data structure right and also we have seen a few terminologies so what is meant by an edge what is meant by a graph and what is meant by a uh, node what is meant by path and degree how to find the degree how to find the size and everything we have seen in this session so if you are having any doubts regarding this terminology and different kinds of graphs so feel free to post your doubts in the comment section so that definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts and if you really understood my session like my sessions share my sessions with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much